proportionate with reasonably proportionate or preferably not disproportionate. I would um, like to hear his uh, views on that. Dr. Megan Woods. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and it's my pleasure to take a call on this important part of um, this legislation. Um, and I have some reasonably specific questions for the Minister and the Chair, and I first of all want to direct my attention to Clause 100 and Subpart 1 of, of this part of the Bill. And I note, um, Mr Chairman, that this is a clause that has been strengthened through the Select Committee process um, and has some extra um, words that have been added. And I'd like to, as a general statement, Mr Chairman, say that it is um, very pleasing, given that this is such an important um, part of this legislation, to see that so many changes have been made made at the committee stage. But I, I note in Clause 100 the words, believe, the words believes on reasonable grounds has been added into this clause. Now, I'm aware, Mr Chairman, that the reasonable grounds test is something that appears commonly within the criminal statute. And what my question for the Minister that I'd like him to answer is whether believes on reasonable grounds um, is the same or different than reasonable grounds to believe um, that is used in other parts of the criminal statute. And I whether ask the Minister and the Chair to give the House some direction around whether there is any specific circumstances relating to this legislation um, that is different than what is, occurs commonly across the criminal statute in terms of that use and whether there is differentiation in terms of the wording that is in, um, contained in Clause 100. Um, also, likewise, there with Clause 102B, the word necessary, where that is used. What is meant in the context of this legislation is, is necessary. I think it would be useful for the House to have some clarity from the Minister and the Chair around what is um, meant by those words. The other clauses that I'd like to refer to in this part, Mr Speaker, um, is um, I'd like to congratulate the committee for the removal of Clause 109. Um, I think that it was rightly noted by members of the committee that this was going to be um, creating law by regulation. Um, and in such an important piece of legislation of this, I think it, it was a prudent move and one that I certainly applaud um, and thank the committee for removing that ability to do that. I think one of the things that um, what has allowed for this piece of legislation to achieve um, the support um, across, the, across the House that it has is that there are layers of transparency and there are clear rules. And, the, and so um, it is, I'm very pleased to see that the, the removal of the, the ability to make those rules by regulation rather than in the body of the statute. The other clause that I'd just like to turn the House's attention to, uh, Mr Chairman, is um, clause um, section, uh, is, um, is um, one one. One. Um, and this, of course, um, is the subpart rest around restricted information and the meaning of restricted information in terms of the Act. And this subpart, sub restricti restricted information, means, and the Act um, it specifies some particular circumstances and meanings of restricted information. A, information that the Inland Revenue Officer may maintain and must assist in maintaining the Secretary under Section 81 of the Tax Administration Act. To, um, B, information relating to national student numbers assigned by the Secretary of Education under Section 343 of the Education Act to students enrolled with a tertiary education provider. Um, and the inclusion in here that the Select Committee did, and this was um, one of the changes that Labor um, pushed for at Select Committee and was very pleased to see its inclusion of um, 111BA, information relating to an adoption held by the Register General um, app appointed under Section 79 one of the Births, Deaths, Marriages and Relationships Act of 1995, and C, the photographic images used by taxi, used for driver licences that are stored under the um, Land Transport Act. What I'd like to know is whether or not, or how it is that as this um, legislation progresses, whether or not there is an ability to add to this, or whether this is an absolutely exhaustive list that is contained within the legislation. Because as we saw at Select Committee, that the ability to identify by the Labour members of that committee identified that information that is collected under the Births, Deaths, Marriages and Relationships Act um, is information that should be restricted. But I think as the passage of this, as this legislation is put into play, it could well be that other um, sources, other sets of information 
may also be seen as desirable to restrict. And my question for the Minister is, is it by amending the legislation and coming back to the House and doing an amendment on the floor of this House that we will have to do that? But Mr, Mr. Chairman, these are questions um, that Mr. would... Chairman. There we go. I'll just leave it there. I'm going to call uh, Ahu Pito William Seo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.